So, you want to be a contractor. Ever wonder what it takes to become a contractor? The journey they go on to get where they are now, or the crazy things they see and hear on the job site? Well, you're in the right spot. Welcome to So You Want to Be a Contractor, the podcast. Join your host, Mike Fisher, as he talks to owners of construction companies from all over about how they got started, how they run their business, and some of the craziest stories they've experienced on their job sites. And now, your host, Mike Fisher. Welcome to So You Want to Be a Contractor. This is episode number 18. My name is Mike Fisher. And uh, my guest today, uh, Kiana Spindola, CEO and President at Spindola Construction. How you doing, sir? Good, man. Good morning. Thanks for having me on your podcast. I appreciate podcast. you really uh, appreciate it, taking brother. the time here to to get started with us. Um, it's nice, uh, so nice to be how we get all of these started. Let us, let us know your story. How did you get into this? How did you uh, get to where you are now? It, it seems like it might be a pretty short story. You seem pretty young to be a president CEO, so it's, <laughs> it's uh, exciting. I, I, want, I want to know more. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. You know, I got to do a face mask every now and then to take care of the skin, you know. Um, so, yeah, actually, this is my dad's company. So he started out the company back in 2005. Uh, he started off as one-time plumbing. So, it was, so I remember like weekends, holidays, or whatever, my brother and I would go out to help him out with whatever, you know, carry out some lumber, ha- hammer some nails, or whatever he would have us do. Free right? labor. Free labor, right? Yeah. So he he definitely took advantage of that. Uh, I remember making like a thousand dollars one summer, and you know at that age I was like, "Wow, this is a lot of money." <laughs> um, but you know now as as I'm a little bit older, no, not so much. Um, but I definitely got a good a lot, uh, gained a lot of good experience working with him. Uh, taught me the value of uh, hard work and dedication. Um, so I was coming up the end of high school. I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do. So. I didn't want to do college at the time, so I really felt like the best option to me was to join the military. So I ended up joining the Marine Corps for a couple of years. Awesome. Thank uh, you for your I service. Got, of course, man. Thank you. Uh, so I really, really grew up, uh, matured. They taught me two things. They taught me how to lead and they taught me how to fight. Um, so I took all those skill sets that I learned in the Marine Corps and I applied it to the family business. So as I was transitioning out, uh, I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do. You know, it was college still for me, yes. So I started going to school to get a business degree, uh, and I wanted to get into entrepreneurship. So I I talked to my dad, like, hey, dad, like, I want to help you build this business. You know, my brother's already on. Um, Like, I can help you grow it out a little bit more. So 2019, I jumped on the company to help him grow the business side of the company. Because although I realized, like, he does phenomenal construction work, you know, on the business end, hey, maybe not so much. When it comes to project management, sales, marketing, bookkeeping, he did okay, but I noticed that it was lacking in that area. And that was like one of the main reasons why our sales weren't up to the level that I wanted them to be. So jumped on 2019, I started applying uh, my military background to the business, started growing that. I got involved with the veteran incubator program to help uh, veteran entrepreneurs start and grow their businesses. Uh, I did a program called the Stanford Ignite program in business innovation and entrepreneurship. Uh, and then recently I started my undergrad at Santa Clara University where I'm majoring in management and minoring in real estate and construction management. So uh, I'm 25. I feel like I have a good accumulation of all the skills and experiences. Uh, and now with the education, I really feel like I'm going to be able to grow this business with with my brother and with my dad and really do something better for our communities and provide a better overall construction experience to any of our clients and anyone that decides to work with us. That's awesome, man. So it kind of take me back a little bit. Um, you said originally he was a, a plumbing contractor. Where did it, uh, where did it, when did it, it was, was bringing you on and some of those ideas, was that, that part of that switch into, I assume you guys are doing more of a, a, a you know, well-rounded kind of uh, remodel construction now. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. So we've, we've always like, we've primarily worked at a homeowners association for the entire life uh, of the company. Um, and I began to realize like only a certain um, contractors are working at homeowners associations, you know, uh, they do good work, but they're not paid well. Uh, the property miners take advantage of them. And I, I started, and I started to see that. And, you know, sometimes I feel that blue collar work is routinely looked down upon. Um, but when it comes to building houses or putting plumbing, electrical and everything, like 
you need to put money into that because if you pay someone a little bit less to do, uh, you know, do some shortcuts, hey, your your toilet might back up, your house might catch on fire, or like a bunch of things that you don't want to happen. So, I I convinced my dad to to like, hey, get your general contractor's license. Like, let's grow this company. Um, and it was a lot of hesitance on on his part and my part because, you know, I don't know how your relationship is with your father, but uh, you know, you could butt heads with parents sometimes. And now that I'm, I'm working with my dad, I live at home. Uh, so I live at home and, you know, I go to work with them. So if something bad happens at the house or <laughs> something bad happens at home, it's, it's there. So yep. it was, it was a lot of that. Um, but we had to, we had to respect and understand where we were coming from. Like I had to talk to him as his son. And then again, as his coworker. Uh, I had to do the same thing with my brother. Like, hey, I want to talk to you as my brother, and I want to talk to you as your coworker. Um, so the family dynamics and running a family business definitely added to the challenges. Like, I cannot tell you how many times I thought about quitting, uh, but at the end of the day, like, family is family, um, and we got to do what we can to help each other out. Yeah, no, I love that. And 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 going back to kind of what you said, right, about about your dad being a, a phenomenal craftsman. Right. You see that a lot in this industry where, uh, you know, guys will work for a long time for a company and, and kind of fine tune their craft. And then they think, Hey, I, I want to do this on my own. I got my own ideas, but that, that business side of it is, is such a huge piece, especially when yeah. it comes to growing. Right. I, I imagine your dad probably could have continued on forever doing what he was doing at the level he was doing and lived very comfortably. Right. And, and provided for, for your family, but by being able to grow, you really have to uh, you know, organize and get those systems in place on the, on the backside. Uh, otherwise, you know, you're not gonna, if you grow, it's not gonna, it's likely not gonna be profitable yeah, and definitely. it's not gonna be, um, you know, efficient. So kind of stepping in, obviously you had that background in the school, the military, some of that stuff. What was that transition? Like, it sounded like, it sounds like your brother was in the business for a while. I assume he kind of got in right out of high school and was in it for a while. Yeah, yeah. So he he definitely followed the the footsteps of my dad. Uh, he didn't want to do college either. Uh, right. So my dad helped him out with trade school. So he's a certified electrician. Um, he's a young man too. He's 22. Um, and I'm trying to push him. We're trying to push him more to take a leadership role uh, because it is his name. And you know he's been talking about how much he wants to grow the company and build it. Uh, so we're like, okay, here's what you can do as as an owner employee. Um, so he loves what he does. Now we're trying to push him to to shift his mindset a little bit to be to be to think more as a as a manager. Uh, like although he's young, sometimes he does feel a little bit uncomfortable because our, our guys are you know older. They've been in the yeah. industry a lot, uh, you know, for a while. Um, so he's like, how do I tell them like to go do this, or how do I tell them to go do that without you know uh, making them upset? So. He's been figuring out things on his own, and like I, I've pr I'm proud of him for the growth that he's done. Uh, and sometimes I still do butt heads with him because it's like different mindsets, different opinions. Uh, but like I was saying, like at the end of the day, like we have to come together to to build this family business because it's it's our name, it's our reputation on the line, on the line, not anyone else's. So kind of maybe speak to that a little bit, right? Especially mm -hmm. stepping in from from uh, from an outside perspective where where you went away for a little bit, right? It, it yeah. wasn't, it wasn't you stepping in as soon as you turned 18 to, you know, out of high school to, to work right. in the business and work your way up, right? You, you went away, you did the military and then you step back in into a leadership role. What was that transition like? Not only with, with your brother and your dad and your family, but also, you know, the rest of the employees there, you know, how did that, Yeah. Uh, how did you go about kind of managing that transition? So there were. So I actually started off working with the company like from the bottom, if that makes sense. So like I, I started learning like a little bit more about the trades, kind of seeing how, how the things rolled. Cause it's like, like you mentioned, like I was gone for four years. So like, I, I didn't know how my dad ran the company now. So everything was new to me. Um, and I remember one job we were doing at a coffee shop. Um, uh, and we were at Home Depot with my brother and my brother was just like pointing me to like pick things up and like, the vibe that he was giving me was just like, I'm in charge of you. I'm telling you what to do. You're not in charge. And, you know, coming from the military, it's like, we're, we're coming from a group that's very collaborative. We like to work together. Like if someone's just yelling at me to do something, like 
Like, I, I'm not going to take that lightly, but I had to bite my <laughs> tongue and I had, I had to talk to my dad like, hey, this is what's going on. Like, like it doesn't seem like we're really respecting each other's backgrounds. We don't necessarily respect each other either. And, you know, that's going to cause a lot of conflict down the road. And if we're going to continue with this, then like we need to we need to hash this out like now. Otherwise, like we're just going to keep banging ourselves against the wall and it's going to be terrible for all of us. So it was really kind of just like for all of us understanding where we come, where we come from, uh, what we're trying to do in the aspect of like our roles in the company. Um, I feel like my brother was definitely maybe a little bit hurt when I came on as the president and CEO. To me, that's just a title. Um, it's more of like, hey, I have additional roles, duties, and responsibilities that I am now in charge of. And, you know, it is my duty to grow this organization. Like, I'm not telling you something mm -hmm. because I want you to do it or because, you know, I don't want to do it. It's like, no, I, I see something that has to be done that will help us in the long run. And if we don't do it, it's just going to hurt us. And it's, it's just going to be terrible for us all in the end. Yeah. No, that, that collaborative, like you went, like you, like you went back to, right. That, that collaborative mindset and, and, and understanding everybody's strength with strengths and weaknesses and backgrounds and, and, and being able to kind of define, you know, roles and responsibilities that way. Um, especially in the fa family sense, right? Yeah. Because like you said, you, <laughs> you gotta be able to come back home and, and live and live with these people. Right. Yeah. Um, uh, so it, it's not as easy as, you know. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. So, so where are you guys at now? Like, what do where, what are you guys kind of special? It sounds like a lot of homeowner association work, HOA work. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, primarily, roughly, I'd say roughly seventy percent of our work is coming from homeowners associations. Uh, so that's keeping us busy. Uh, I've I've worked with a decent amount of people. It's 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 taught me a lot of what to avoid and what to look out for um specifically like this week um there was this investor that purchased a unit and we did a shower valve for him and his his waste and overflow um pipe was leaking um we didn't have anything to do with it but because we were working there he's like he asked us and i can't believe he had the audacity to ask of this he's like he didn't have insurance for his property yet so he asked us hey could you claim it on your insurance uh, even though you had, even though we didn't have anything to do with it and man, my father and I were pretty <laughs> livid to, to this man to have the audacity to ask that, like, who the hell do you think you are, man? Right. Yeah. Um, so I've had a, we've had a couple of those kinds of people at homeowners association. So it's really taught me what it like really taught me to look out for people that are there to just take advantage of you and that don't really care what you're, what you're what you're there to do for them and to help them out they just want the cheapest work the quickest work and when it blows up in your face or in their face they want to blame you and right. i don't right. want to roll with that anymore so <clears throat> so it's really taught me what to look out for and what not to do and we really want to start transitioning more into bathroom kitchen remodels entire house renovations because that's where the money's at um you know we're starting to include uh simple simple like technology to help us simplify the permit process, the payment process, um, and more collaborative project management software to provide a better overall experience to the customer. Um, I think you know that, you know, um, behind automobile sales, construction projects are the highest in consumer spending. So, you know, you could spend, at least here in the Bay Area, 20 to 30 to 40, $50,000 on a bathroom or a kitchen. So homeowners want to get their money's worth. And they don't want things to, to mess up. You know, they just want to yeah. cut a check and that's it. I just like remodel my kitchen, remodel my bathroom, remodel my kit or my house, whatever. So I've had to like really understand the process of how a client feels uh, and also educate my dad and my brother be like, hey, you know, although you do great construction work, that's not the entirety of the business. That's not the entirety of the company. There's a sales and project management that the clients really, really also care about. Um, and that turns out to be one of the highest things that they value communication, transparency, yeah. right? Um, cause again, like there's a lot of money going in and for homeowners around here, they're making 150,000 a year to put in $30,000 into a project. Like 
that's a decent amount of money that could be going to, you know, paying bills, groceries, piano lessons or whatever. So I've been really trying to figure out how to make that process for our clients a lot more easier. Uh, and really what it comes down to is just being honest and transparent as much as I can uh, about how the process is going to go, you know, setting clear expectations up front about how the project is going to go and what th they could experience. And some people don't necessarily like that. They have other expectations and they want me to do things their way. Uh, and I tell them like, no, I'm not going to do it your way because I have a process. I have a guideline that you have to follow. Uh, and when you don't follow that, you know, things can happen that you're not going to be happy about. So really just harping on that process, understanding the customer's point and making this process a lot more easier for them. Yeah, there's definitely, you know, going back to what you said about, you know, kind of transitioning into, into that kind of work, it's, it's a bit more gratifying, yeah. right? I mean, being able to, yeah, being, being the guy that just, and to, to your point, right? Like talking to your dad and your brother about that being a different mind, there's, there's definitely a mind sh mindset shift when you, when you go into that, right? Because working for the, the homeowners associations, it's like you said, it's quick, fast, mm -hmm. cheap, you know, whatever, whatever, get the job done. Whereas uh, moving into something like a remodel for a homeowner, that's something that they, they value, yeah. right? Like that's, some, that's their baby, yeah. right? That's, that's something that they're going to have to live in. Yeah. So, um, you know, shifting that mindset mm -hmm. is, is, is where a lot of your success is going to mm -hmm. come from. So I think you're on the right track Thank for you. sure. Kind of, where do you, where do you find yourself, uh, in, in that marketing process right now? Right. So being able to shift and be able to, to to get those clients and, and, and do that kind of work. How does, how has that process worked out for you and, and where do you see yourself being successful? You know, it, it's, it's been a struggle to be honest with you, especially when I first jumped on, uh, there are a lot of, um, marketing platforms that I look into, uh, specifically one that we ended up paying $4,000 for that we didn't get a single, uh, lead out of. Um, so it, it definitely hurt financially um, and it made me rethink our strategy. Uh, we tried, you know, pay-per-click leads. We tried uh, other social media platforms to really no avail. So it took me a while to figure out what worked and what doesn't work. Um, and actually one of our bis business partners are going to help us kind of subsidize the cost of one of our marketing campaigns coming up uh, later this month. And I feel like now that we have more data to back up what we're trying to do, uh, we have a, a better website, we have more marketing material out there. I feel like it'll be, we'll, we'll get more, we'll get better results out of that marketing campaign. Um, a lot of it, man, is just trial and error. Um, I tried looking up like marketing plans for, for contractors for construction and it, there really isn't much out there. Uh, there's only a few that really stand out. But for the majority, like a lot of stuff in the construction industry, especially residential side, I've had to figure out on my own. Uh, I'm not sure if that's just how the industry as a, is as a whole. Um, but roughly, I've had to figure out everything on my own. Uh, I've been getting more involved in uh, networking groups. I've been, I'm going to go check out NARI. They're a residential uh, networking group here in the Silicon Valley. So I will see if there's construction professionals there that can help me out really develop the business side and the marketing side of the company and, you know, potentially connect me with some leads and maybe convert those leads into sales. Yeah. I, I mean, I think like you, to your point that the construction industry, and I think a lot of it has to do with, with the contractor side, right. Not being, uh, as open or as willing to kind of put themselves yeah. out there, right. From an ownership standpoint, I think a lot of that is changing, right. I mean, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm 170 or so episodes into this podcast. And so, you know, that's 170 construction owners that are right. willing to kind of put themselves out there and, and try something a little bit different and, and be on a platform that maybe, you know, four or five years ago, wasn't, uh, something that they would think about, but. Also, I mean, I think a lot of it just has to do with branding, right? Like making sure, yeah. especially in the, in the, in the residential space, right? Where yeah, you're, yeah, you're yeah. appealing to homeowners who are on Instagram and, and mm -hmm. online a lot. And, and a lot of it is just kind of more, more branding than marketing, right? I mean, making yeah. sure that your name is out there and that you're, you know, doing the work that you're doing. So kind of with that in mind, I know for, I mean, just talking to other people, Instagram is pretty big for a lot of people in that space. Are you guys doing mm -hmm. anything 
deliberately on Instagram or is it just, do you, do you have any kind of play in there? Um, that's, that's doing, doing anything for you? Uh, for Instagram, not at the moment. I do have that on, on my marketing plan timeline. Uh, as of right now, I'd like to try next door. I'm not sure if you're mil- familiar with that platform. Yes. I've heard them, um, yeah. okay. So, and another plus to this is like, we live on a busy street and I looked it up too. Uh, but on my street, there's like six to 7,000 cars that pass like on the daily. And we have like a company van out there. Yep. Um, and, and I, I track people who call me like, Hey, like, how'd you hear about us? They're like, Oh, we saw your van on, you know, whatever street. And I'm like, yep. cool. So I'm starting to figure out from that, like what zip codes to specifically target. Um, and next door is more of like a, you know, neighborhood social media kind of platform. So based on the information that I'm getting from the calls, I can figure out, all right, I want to target these, these key zip codes, these key areas. And I feel like I'll get a higher return because they're seeing my van. Um, so like I mentioned, like I, I'm going to be launching that marketing campaign later this month. So once I get all the information, I'll be able to make a decision from there to, to either continue it or maybe try something else. But that's where I'm at in regards to marketing and, and branding at the moment. Yeah, I mean, I think that's smart, and that's something that you know not a lot of people are are kind of connecting those dots or being able to, uh, kind of. It's all data, right? Like, yeah, being able yeah. to and, and 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 there there's so much data out there, but to, to be able to collect it and you know kind of filter through it and understand how it's working for you and get it to work for you, um, is mm-hmm. is pretty next level for a construction company, right? I mean, that's yeah. that's not something that uh, a lot of contractors are doing, so. Good on you for doing that. I mean, I think that's awesome. And I, and I hope it works out for you too. Right. I mean, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> <there's>, <laughs> I hope but, so. There's money yeah, into that. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And that's, and that's what a lot of contractors don't understand either is that, you know, there's, there's time and, and maybe some, if, if you're doing some fancy stuff on Instagram, you know, maybe some money involved as well, but a lot of that, a lot of contractors have the mindset and, and a lot of it has to do with, because that's how they operate, but they all, yeah. a lot of them have the con the mindset of. You know, if I'm putting money into something, I have to be able to get a return. Well, that may right. not be the case necessarily with something like Instagram or, or like you said, setting your truck out somewhere. Like, even if you took it to another zip code to let it sit for a few days, like you might lose that truck for a few days and the gas to get there. But, you know, it's, it's more about branding, right? And creating a brand exactly. for yourself where you may not get a, a few calls, but the way it works is, you know, when you do call somebody. Maybe they did see your van or the first thing they're exactly. going to do is look you up on Instagram and see what kind of work you've done. And, there you go. And you're yeah. kind of creating a digital resume and a digital business card for mm-hmm. yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, exactly. Where we're, so it's not all about return necessarily. It's more it's like, like you said, it's that, that branding piece. So it's, the, um, the opportunity it's exciting cost for sure. In it. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's fun the, to see contractors kind of getting in that space and, and, and being a little bit more, uh, active there. Yeah. What I, what I like to add to that, um, it's like my dad's old school. Um, you know, he's all about the trades and everything. And I realized like he's not the only one like that. Like it seems like a majority of yep. contractors have that kind of mindset, which like it's it's great. There's a time and place for that. Don't get me wrong. I love it. But when you're trying to expand, grow a business, you have to shift your mindset a little bit. Uh to take care of the marketing, to take care of your of your website, uh, your branding. And look at things as as an opportunity cost instead of like, oh, you know, I'm not making any money off of it. Well, obviously, because it's 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 an opportunity cost. Um, so kind of educating him and realizing that, all right, this is a whole industry problem uh, makes me feel a little bit relieved that I'm not the only one dealing with these issues. Yeah. So now that I have that understanding, it's it's like I said, it's a lot more relieving and now I have a better gauge on how to attack the problem and how to help nudge my father uh, into this new age of residential contractors. Because our industry is shifting. Like, like younger generations are coming in like myself that see the value of construction work and love the construction industry for what it does. But they realize that, hey, there's some issues and some problems that I feel like a, a younger generation can, can pick up and help with. So now it's like, all right, how can I do that? How can we do that and help these older, help the older generation uh, realize some things? And in turn, they're going to help me out too. Don't get me wrong. Um, yeah, there's a lot of expertise there to be, to, right? And knowledge to be gained for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and together, like, we're, we're going to be able to build something great. So 
So kind of go into, kind of on that, go into uh, what each of your roles are. Is it just the three of you from your family that are involved or is there anybody else or and, and yeah, kind of so, what, your, what, you, what each of your roles are? Yeah. So family wise, uh, it's us three. So my dad's the general contractor. So he takes care of all the construction work, uh, scheduling with the subs uh, and coordinating with the homeowners associations where it is. My brother is more of a supporting role for him. Uh, he's also a construction lead taking care of our crew while we're on job sites and being the uh, interaction piece between the HOA customer or whoever needs it. And then I'm more of a background support role. Uh, so I'm doing the the bookkeeping, project management, sales, market, anything business related, I'm taking care of that. Uh, at, the, at the moment right now, my time is a little bit divided between my undergrad and working full-time, part-time-ish. Yeah. Uh, so I'm really fortunate to have my dad and my brother taking care of that. And, you know, Mondays, like, Hey, it's, it's all business. It's all paperwork, whatever I have to do to catch us up, uh, on the business side, like we get done. Um, and we're starting to move better, move better together. Like we're a well-oiled machine. Now the cogs are moving smoothly back then. Not so much, but now we're doing a lot better. Um, so it's a work in progress, you know, Yeah. takes a little bit of time, right? Finding yeah. everybody, you know, it's, it's like learning to dance, right? You got to kind of learn yeah. where everybody fits in and. <laughs> where everybody, uh, exactly where, where they're all moving and, and what their roles are for sure. But yeah, that, yeah. it sounds like you guys have it down and, and you mentioned kind of managing subcontractors. What's that breakdown you guys are carrying right now of uh, how much work you guys sell perform? Like what's your labor force look like versus, mm -hmm. you know, the work that you're, you're using subcontractors for. Yeah. So we're doing mm -hmm. a majority of the work, like say when it comes to like, uh, bathroom miles and, and, and tile work, like we, we let someone else take care of that, but we primarily do our own work. Like we do the framing, plumbing, electrical. We also sell about, uh, HVAC too. Um, but primarily we're doing all the majority of the trades. Uh, we're crew six. It's so it's me, my brother, you know, my dad. And then we got, actually we have seven now. So we're, we got a, we have four crewmen uh that are doing the trades um and they're a good crew you know i i've seen the value in what they do um i i love helping them out i love construction um yeah so what bringing those guys on were they did they have any experience at all or what is your dad's role as far and maybe your brother as well as far as kind of training those guys and what does that process look like for you when you when you're bringing somebody on because you you got to find somebody that can do a little bit of everything yeah. right i mean yeah. you're not looking for a guy that just hangs drywall 24 hours, right, you know, right. eight hours a day or whatever. <laughs> so, so thankfully, uh, these guys have been with us since, since the entirety of, of the business for like, so I, I've pretty much known them like for a majority of my life. Like, uh, I remember working with them like summers or holidays or weekends, just like, like seeing them like, Hey, how you doing, sir? Like, uh, I hope you're doing well. <laughs> and then, you know, now I'm working with them. So I've, yeah. I've gotten to know them a little bit more personal. Uh, you know, about like what's going on in their lives. And, you know, I help, like we help them out whatever, whenever we can too. Um, if they need stuff printed or they need help with some documents, like, Hey, like, Hey, no worries, man. Like I'll help you out. Um, Cause at the end of the day, like, you know, they're, they're helping us, you right. know? Uh, so the least we could do is help them out a little bit as well too. You know, not with just a paycheck, but, you know, care about them, you know, and yep. help them grow as people and as, and as individuals as well. So as you see yourself growing, do you see yourself bringing on more employees to, to do that work? Or do you see yourself, um, uh, hiring more subs to do work and, and kind of letting these guys be foremen? I'm kind of, well, to be transparent with you with where I'm kind of at, like my dad's thinking about retiring within the next three to five years. And that's roughly like the time that I'm going to be graduating college. Uh, you know, I have some financial responsibilities to take care of, like I'm, I'm helping pay off the house and take care of some other things. Uh, my dad wants to go back down to Mexico and build his house down there. So like, I understand. Uh, so I don't know what my future is going to look like. Um, I might think about doing a career, maybe in consulting, construction management or real estate. I don't know. Um, but ideally I would love to grow this company. Uh, I love to have some help, uh, on the business side. Cause like, I think they're good with the business, with the construction side, but I, I feel like I need a little bit help, uh, especially as the business starts growing with a little bit like admin help, helping right. out with the project management. Um, and I, it seems like the guys are, are comfortable where they're at as it, as, as we are in a small residential, you know, construction company. Uh, but as it stands, I would really like some help when it comes to the business admin paperwork, uh, because that's where you know, we're lacking a little bit. Yeah. I mean, I, I, at some point you got to, to kind of 
delegate some of that stuff out, right? And, and, yeah. and find people that are that are good at a few things so that you don't have to do everything for right, sure. Right. So, I mean, is have there been conversations between you guys about what, what the next few years look like for you? Or No, th- or what thankfully... The- uh, I appreciate you bringing that up. Thankfully, yeah, uh, roughly like at the beginning and in, in the middle of our journey, like I was hesitant to bring it up uh, because it's like, hey, are you like you're either in this 100 percent or you're not, uh, which like it, it's it's valid. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, yeah, well, you also don't want it to seem like you're trying to push anybody out or, you know, yeah, you're like that's, no, that's for definitely sure. sensitive for his family, for sure. And like I, I had a heart to heart with my dad uh, the other day, like, hey, dad, you know, we have financial responsibilities to take care of. Like, you know, I'm. You know, I'm at a really good university right now. I have a solid uh, background and experience, and I, I could, you know, easily get a, a solid career with a decent salary um, and, you know, support my family even more. Um, and he's like, hey, man, like, thank you for telling me. Like, I would be, I would be the first one to tell you to go for it. Uh, so that was like another like sigh of relief um, to be like, I have the support from my dad. Uh, my brother still wants to continue with the business and, you know, I'll help him out wherever I can. Uh, I'm not sure if he necessarily understands where I'm coming from yet. Uh, cause like I am, I mean, I am the older brother and I feel like a lot of that responsibility falls on me as being the, uh, the oldest. Um, so I feel like in time, you know, we'll, we'll have an understanding of, of each other and we'll both be able to move forward and, and help our family grow and be, create that generational wealth for all of us. Yeah. And, and I mean, if it does end up having kind of dissolved the company you're in now, at least you've being able to spend that time, like you said, yeah. with your family. And then also you, you've got that knowledge and, and, and a great, you know, background. I mean, not many people are, are at your level or, or your level of responsibilities at your age. Right. So yeah. that's, that's definitely something that can transfer. And, and like you said, you know, be able to, uh, to kind of take that wherever you, you go in your career for sure. Yeah. So, yeah, that's, that's, that's fun. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's exciting. No, yeah, I, it sounds sure. like, it sounds like you guys are kind of in a, in a weird state right now where, you know, there's, there's a few different paths you could go down as, as the, you know, the next few years come, but, um, yeah, it'll, it'll be, it sounds like there, it sounds like there isn't a bad path, right? Like yeah, it, it, you, you could stay where you're at right now and, and kind of blow that up. Even if your dad leaves and, yeah, and yeah. be able to expand and, and, you know, kind of grow that out. Or like you said, you all kind of go your separate ways mm-hmm. and, and like- uh, and move on. Yeah. And I, and I like the journey. Don't get me wrong, man. Like I, I joining the military, like I never thought that it would happen. Uh, going to college, I never thought that I would happen, but joining the military was the best thing I made, the best decision I made for myself. Uh, it taught me like a different perspective of how I see myself in this country. Um, and you know, now I'm in this position at this young age where I have a lot of responsibilities, but I, I like it. I like being at this day and age in my life and being able to impact a lot of people, um, and helping a lot of people out too, as well. Yeah, no, it's definitely fun, man. So where, where do you, where do you, where, what's, what's the next, I mean, obviously we don't know what the next three to five years looks like for you, but are there any kind of goals you have in the next, you know, six months to a year that, that you guys are really pushing for to, to kind of take you to uh, the next level? Uh, while you're at where you're at right now yeah so like i mentioned earlier this month i'm going to be connecting with some uh construction residential construction uh professionals with the nari group here in palo alto california uh to see if that can kind of help us get to the next level um you know get get involved with um older generations that have been around the industry longer than i have and they could provide a different uh set of skills mindsets and perspectives that i don't necessarily yeah. have um, get this marketing campaign going, uh, pass my, my classes, uh, and balance <laughs> all that out and try to have yep. a social life in between. Right. Um, but that, that's as much as I I've got. So like roughly I'm looking at till the end of the summer, uh, cause I'm also like, once I'm out of school for the summer, like I want to be applying everything I've learned so far and kind of like build us up a little bit better. So when I'm back in school this fall, uh, we have, we have set up better processes and we're, we're, we're growing, you know, we're, we're taking yeah. it step by step by step, you know? Well, I think that's, I, I love what you're doing there as far as joining some of those groups too. I mean, there's obviously those groups exist in this industry yeah. and, and I think there's a lot of value there for sure, but there's also a mindset of, you know, not being able to kind of put your pride in your pocket and, and learn from somebody, right? Yeah. Like everybody thinks <laughs> that they, 
they know how to do it. They can do it the best yeah. and, and they don't need to hear from anybody else. But, you know, even if this time that you spend, and I, I'm sure there's a cost involved in getting involved in this group, but like, even if, even if it doesn't result in, in, you know, business mm -hmm. directly, it's just another one of those things, right? Like exactly. you're, you're learning, you're gaining new perspective, you're, you're kind of, you know, taking what other people have done and, and, and being able to apply that to your business for mm -hmm. sure. Continuous growth. That's what we're trying to do. Yep. Yeah, for sure. Well, Kendall, this has been awesome, man. I, I appreciate it. I think, uh, it's going to be fun to see. I, I'm, I'm excited. I literally followed you on Instagram while we were doing <laughs> this stuff. So, uh, cause I, I'm, I'm excited to see, yeah, I, I want to follow this along and, and where you guys Thank are you, headed and, and yeah. And if, if I'm still doing this in a couple of years and, uh, <laughs> things have changed, we, we need to get you back on to, to see how it all went down, but, right. uh, it, it's going to be fun. I appreciate it. Um, hopefully. You know, things, I, I, uh, not hopefully things will go well <laughs> for you guys. I, I think you guys, uh, have it set up pretty well from what I understand. And, and, uh, I'm looking forward to it. So thanks for the time, man. I yeah, appreciate man. it. I appreciate your time, man. But Thank before you, we let you go, we want to, uh, give you an opportunity to let everybody know how to get a hold of you, whether again, it's your website, your Instagram, phone number, email, whatever it is, how they can get a reach out. Yeah. So thank you again, Mike, for having me on your podcast. And if y'all want to get in touch with me, please just go out, check out our website. It's www.spindolaconstruction.com or even find me up on LinkedIn on Keanu Spindola. So again, thank you so much. I really appreciate it, brother. No, we appreciate it, man. Have a good one. You too, And uh, we'll keep in touch. Thank you. Hey, thanks for listening. If you had a good time, be sure to hit that subscribe button to get all the latest episodes. And if you had a really good time, leave a review to let us know what you thought. Until then, go gather some crazy stories on your job sites and we'll see you next time on So, You Want to Be a Contractor.